It's capture the flag, soccer style. This is capture the balls. Here, we're developing teamwork and strategic thinking. Use cones to set up a rectangular grid and use four more cones to create a square home base for every three to five players. Line up all your balls down the middle of the grid. Here's how it looks. Three, two, one, play. Starting at their own home base, each team tries to get and keep the most balls before time runs out. Players can dribble or pass the balls into their base, or they can steal from other bases. They can also defend balls in their own base. It's kind of like playing Stratego on a soccer field. Remember that one? Yeah, you do. On that note, this game works because it's really fun. Yes, it's about strategy and teamwork and dribbling and passing, but sometimes you have to let loose and battle over some balls. This is that game. Coaches, make sure to count down before the game ends. That's just good manners. After each round, encourage teams to go to their bases and come up with a game plan for the next round. So how about I'm the person who's getting all the balls from there and passing it? Remember, win the ball, go for the steal, protect your base. Thievery has never been so wholesome. All tag games are great for agility. This is Team Ball Tag. And in this one, we're also developing players' dribbling, passing, and teamwork skills. You have a stronger pick than me. I'll go in the middle of it. Let's go, let's go, let's go! <laughs> Use four cones to mark your space and divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. Every player gets their own ball. Here's how it looks. Let's begin, let's go. Each round, one team attacks by kicking their balls to hit their opponent's balls, keeping count of how many hits they rack up. Yeah, I got you, Miles. It's a little like pool, where the attacker's ball is the cue ball used to knock another player's ball away. The other team, meanwhile, tries to defend their balls from the attacker's strikes. If it looks like chaos, or this, you're probably doing it right. After about a minute, half players switch roles, keeping count so that they can try to beat their own scores the next time they attack. All right, guys, good work. Let's see what Purple can do now protecting the ball. You guys ready? Let's see if you guys can get them. Let's go. Yeah. Ooh, sorry. Encourage players to think of ways to attack as a team to get more hits, like doubling up to go after one defender or finding ways to help each other retrieve balls so they can spend less time chasing them down. Coaches, we want attackers' passes hitting balls, not people, by passing flat along the ground, not chipping it in the air. And if you really want to go for broke, try having both sides attack at once. Remember, protect your ball, flat passes, work as a team. Keep your eye on the ball, all of them. Here's a game that's right up Captain America's alley. This is Shield Steel. Here, players are learning to maintain possession of the ball under pressure from a defender, otherwise known as shielding. Set up a small square of cones for each pair of players and give each pair a ball. Here's how it looks. One player shields the ball while the other tries to steal it. If the first player loses possession, they try to steal it back while the other player shields the ball. After about 60 seconds, call time, then switch roles so each player gets multiple turn shielding. But before you start, show players how to shield. It starts with positioning, like this. Body sideways, arm up and out, like you're holding, well, a shield. Then you're gonna use, hold on Sheridan, you're gonna use your foot farthest away from the defender to move the ball. Using the sole of the foot to maintain control and pivoting or even leaning into the defender like this to keep the ball as safe as possible. Coaches, shielding is hard. It can take five or six years to master this skill, not five or six reps. So take it slowly and praise their effort. Remember, shields up, ball on the outside foot, Go for the steal. Soccer players, assemble. No, it's not a mistake. Hear us out. This is Team Handball. Yes, we're breaking the cardinal rule of soccer. You can use your hands. This game helps players learn attack positioning and, added bonus, promotes teamwork by requiring an assist to score. You'll need four cones to mark your space, with goals or pairs of cones on each end line. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. Players use their hands to pass and catch the ball. They can run while holding the ball, but only for three steps. Then it's time to pass. 
players score with their feet, but only after a teammate passes the ball. No dropping the ball to yourself. If the ball hits the ground or goes out of bounds, or if a defender intercepts, it's a turnover. Coaches, using their hands makes it easier for players to keep their heads up so they get a better idea of their teammates' positions and how to move to support each other. Encourage players to mix in some long passes to switch the point of attack. Remember, heads up, find a teammate, assists to score, and no penalties for these handballs. When in doubt, talk it out. The game is Gates Passing. Here, we're developing players' passing and communication skills. Use cones to set up a rectangular grid and place pairs of cones arm's length apart randomly throughout the space. These are your gates. Divide your players into pairs, each with a ball. Here's how it looks. Ready and begin, let's go. Pairs dribble around the grid, trying to score as many goals as they can by passing to each other through the gates until you call time. Keep it basic. Done well, it might look like this. Players working together to move fluidly from one gate to the next. If done not so well, you'll know it when you see it. And by the way, that's okay. Practice makes progress. Coaches, encourage players to tell their teammate where they plan to go next and to head there after passing, while receivers direct their first touch towards their target. Remember, pass and move. Soft touches, work as a team. Simple passes, coaching bliss. This game is double trouble. This is 2v1 to goal. Here, we're helping players learn how to double up against a single defender. Create a rectangular grid with a goal or pair of cones on one end. Divide players into two teams, one in pennies, starting on opposite end lines. Here's how it looks. Two attackers initiate play from their end line and are met by one defender. The attackers work together to try to score. If the defender intercepts the ball, they can score by dribbling the ball over the end line. When a player scores or the ball goes out of bounds, new players rotate in and a new round begins. The idea is for attackers to use their number to their advantage by getting the defender to commit to the ball, then passing it to their teammate. When it works, it's a beautiful thing. Nice shot, Caroline. Coaches, defenders have a thankless job here and may get discouraged. Remind them that this game is meant to be challenging and rotate players so everyone gets a turn playing both ends. Remember, draw in the defender, work as a team, and take the shot. Yes, good things do come in pairs. Big things can come in small packages. We're playing 2v2 to small goals, attacking. This two-on-two -two scrimmage helps players develop their team attacking and shooting skills. Use four cones to mark a small rectangular space and place small goals or pairs of cones placed arm's length apart on each end line. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. Here's how it looks. Two attackers initiate play from their end, trying to score on the goal or between the cones below knee height like this. The two defenders can steal or intercept the ball and score too. And when a player scores or the ball goes out of bounds, new players rotate in and a new round begins. So next one, next one. We want attackers learning to spread out, not clump together, with the attacker without the ball finding open space. So when their teammate with the ball meets a defender, they have options. They can pass the ball like this, or try to take the defender on. Coaches, players might be so excited to scrimmage, they may burst out wildly and make mistakes, which can lead to turnovers. Encourage them to be patient and to work with their teammate to get closer to the goal before taking their shot. Remember, spread out, find open space, and pass to your teammate. This game has a fraction of the players, but 100% of the fun. Two players, lots of space to defend, no problem. This is 2v2 to end lines defending. This two-on-two -two scribbage helps players learn to defend as a team. Yes, attacking may seem more fun, but defending is just as important. Use four cones to mark a small rectangular space. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies on opposite end lines. Here's how it looks. Two attackers initiate play, trying to score by dribbling the ball over the defender's end line. 
two defenders, meanwhile, try to stop them from advancing, or better yet, win back the ball and score themselves. When a player scores or the ball goes out of bounds, new players rotate in and a new round begins. At this age, both defenders may try to rush the ball, but if they work together, they'll have better luck. So he goes like that, you slow it down, and you're still here, ready to get the ball, right? Right? Ready, still ready. See? I won the ball. Simple. <laughs> Just like that, right? It starts with the defender closest to the ball approaching the attacker quickly, then slowing down on approach, getting low, and taking a sideways stance. This forces the attacker to either shield the ball or move laterally towards the touchline or to the waiting arms or legs of the second defender. While the first defender is doing their thing, the partner should be sliding over into a position to back them up or to collect the ball if the first defender pokes it away. Coaches, with so much end line for attackers to score on, this can be frustrating for defenders. If they're getting discouraged, you can narrow the width of the field to give them a better chance of success. Remember, quick, slow, low. Sideways stance, stop the attack. Partnership has its privileges, even on defense. No player is an island, except in this game, this is 1v1 to end lines. Here, each player gets lots of touches on the ball, and they're developing their dribbling, attacking, and defending skills. Use four cones to create a small rectangular grid. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies, starting on opposite end lines. Here's how it looks. Here we go, keep that ball under control. Players scrimmage 1v1 and score by dribbling the ball over their opponent's end line within a hula hoop's distance of their body. Well done, Charlie! Each time a player scores or the ball goes out of bounds, new players rotate in and a new round begins. Well done, Sasha! There's no shooting here. Yes, we know that's the fun part, but this helps players learn to control the ball, and it gives defenders more of a challenge. Go Sheridan, don't let her turn! Players love this game because they get so many touches on the ball and even more room to score, and it's fast paced. So even if you have players waiting, they'll rotate quickly and appreciate the chance to catch their breath. Coaches, if players are unevenly matched, pair them off by ability instead, or play the ball directly to a less skilled player. This way you can challenge each player to the level of their ability. Remember, use your speed, protect the ball, maintain control. Where they're going, you don't need goals. You'll need those feet to go head to head. This is 1v1 to small goals. Here, players are working on dribbling, shooting, attacking, and defending. Use four cones to mark your space with a goal or pair of cones on each end line. Divide players into two teams, one in pennies. Here's how it looks. Play. Each side sends in one player at a time. Nice move, Sheridan. Players score by kicking the ball into the goal or through the cones below knee height. Excellent. Hey, Charlie, great job. Way to stay with it all the way to the end. When a player scores or the ball goes out of bounds, a new round begins. Encourage attackers to look for the goal when they win the ball to see if they can shoot right away, and if not, to use their speed when dribbling with small touches to get around their opponent and bigger touches to get away. Encourage defenders to try to stay between the attacker and the goal to block opportunities to score. Coaches, it's hard to go wrong with this game because it's just like scrimmaging, but each player gets more touches on the ball. Keep an eye on pairing so players aren't outmatched or play the ball to the less skilled player to level the field a bit. Remember, attackers, use your speed. Defenders, protect the goal and wait for your moment. Small goals, big dreams.